soldiers of the Most High, God, third dimensional warriors, the offsprings of the great I Am. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it <clears throat> because we have a choice. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning live training session for warriors. Warriors. Everyone say, I'm a warrior. warrior. Not a wimp. Not a wimp. <laughs> yes. Would you turn to the book of Luke? Training for reigning. Knowing and obeying. Amen. To know and not obey is the worst thing you'd be. Glory. <clears throat> Luke 4. Luke 4 is for you. Glory, glory, glory. We're going to start at verse 1 because this is such a powerful chapter. There's so much meat in this chapter. Is everybody ready? <clears throat> Let's start at verse 1. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hello. Jesus was what? Filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow, it's amazing how many people don't stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if Jesus needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how about us? Amen. <laughs> and how do you stay filled with the Holy Spirit? You worship corporately. That's how you stay filled. You ask to be filled, and then you worship. That's how you stay filled. Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and he was what? Led. led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So can you be led by the Spirit without being filled by the Spirit? No. I hear this all the time. Well, I was led by the Spirit. You're not even filled with the Spirit. What the heck you know? No, but stinky religion. You reject assembling. You reject to be filled. You misinterpret the word. And you live by emotion. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and led by the Spirit into where? The wilderness. Let me tell you, when you get filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you into battle. He doesn't put you on the side to observe. He sends you into the battle. Frontliners. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, led into battle against the ruler of the earth, against the ruler of the seen and the unseen of the earth, against the shape-shifting fallen cherub of God. Does everybody get this? Hallelujah. Now, being tempted by the devil for 40 days. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when he had ended, he was hungry. And of course, the devil comes when you are weak physically. Amen. Does everybody get it? If, and he comes and he tempts. What is he tempting you with? He knows when you are weak. The first thing he's going to tempt you with is identity. Because he says, if you are the son of God, he's going to first tempt you with identity. He wants to know if you know who you are. Because if he don't, then he can go another step further. Hello. Oh, praise God. If you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. Let me tell you, the devil will challenge you and your identity, especially when you go into battle. And then he's going to challenge you in the area to do something for God when God's not told you to. 
Because when it doesn't come to pass that you weren't supposed to do from the beginning, then the enemy beats you up and steals your identity and puts you in a place where I'm not worthy, I'm no good. Offense, rejection, all of these other things, and oppression. Why? Because in the beginning, the person didn't stay filled. Does everybody get it? Fill, 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 and fill. In verse 4. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. So we see here that the attack, when you're weak, physically weak, we must be spiritually strong. Even the word says when you are weak, then you are strong. But if you're not filled with the spirit, you can't be strong. Jesus responds to the devil. He actually responds to his own recorded words of power and truth and light. Because he's going to attack darkness. So he uses his own recorded words. Does everybody see this? Now... Then the devil takes him up on a high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now grab hold of this. He takes Jesus the creator, because God allows him to, to bring him in a dimensional arena where all time is stopped and he can show him everything. This is the power of Satan. Satan. What was he doing? He was bringing delusion. Does everybody get it? He was bringing a false image. He was showing Jesus everything that he owns. He was tempting him. He brought him an image. He brought him a delusion. The devil took him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Because the devil is a dimensional being. Again, he's a shape-shifting, fallen cherub, an angel. Is everybody okay? All right. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give to you. Of course, he lied. And their glory for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Now, isn't this what he does? The devil brings delusion and deception and false promises. Look at how many people sold their souls for fame and fortune. Listen, the devil hasn't changed either. Either has his tactics. In verse 7, Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. That's all he wants is worship. So people worship the devil. Willingly and unwillingly. Because sometimes they don't even know they're worshiping him. How many of you know disobedience is worship of the devil? How, you know, how many of you all know rebellion is worship of the devil? He doesn't need you to get down on your knees and worship him. You worship, we worship him by disobedience and rebellion. Hello? Verse 8, and Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, now after these challenges, he brings it back again to try to I, Luke cause him to See if he still has maintained his identity. He wanted to know if he was willing to sell his identity for everything he offered him. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written. Now he uses his, Jesus' own words to attack Jesus. Does everybody get this? See, the devil knows the scripture better than me and you. He'll outwit us without the Holy Spirit. 
How many times have people heard the word heard the word of God spoken to them, but it was not the word of word of God who spoke it. It was not God who spoke it. Does everybody get it? So people go into places and do things and marry people they're not supposed to and all kinds of other stuff, get jobs they're not supposed to, and all these other things saying that the devil, uh, that God told them when it really wasn't the Lord at all. And it all started because of lack of being filled with the Spirit. For it is written, he shall give you angels, charge over you and keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now, of course, we know the scripture is true. But we know that the source of who spoke this is not true. We know it's a setup. It's a lie. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now Jesus says, listen, homie, you ain't going to tempt me no more. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He just told him he was God. <laughs> now, what happens? Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until a what? Opportune moment. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, the devil brings delusion and deception and false promises and will return through his demons. After attack, you and I, if we are victorious in our attacks and battles... You gain more power. But if you are not victorious, you lose power. Is everybody okay? Again, after attack, more power if victory was established, or weaker if captivity is established. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 14. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Hello, after what? He just been through temptations. He returned in greater power. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came with a message now. Why? Because he had the right to decree a message because of his victory in battle. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, who prophesied about Jesus, the Christ. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom or liberty to the captives, and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So what he's saying, the spirit of the Father is upon me. The spirit of the Father of creation is upon me to set those who've been taken by spiritual captivity, free from sin, deception, and hell. Spiritual captivity. Many people are in spiritual captivity and don't even know it. Is everybody okay? 1 John chapter 5, and that's today's message. You can go home now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5. Oh, snap. First John chapter 5. Honey, will you hold my pages? <laughs> oh, happy days. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Down, down. That's good. No more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Come on, lift your hands to heaven and get a drink. We need one. <laughs> Fill us, dress us, possess us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whew, it's hot in here. Dear God, it's hot in here. Verse 18, is everybody there? 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Spiritual captivity. Let's speak it. Now we know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. Does not sin. But he who has been born of God does what? He keeps himself. In other words, he has dominion and authority over the old man. And a wicked one does not touch him. What's, he trying, what's the Lord trying to expose here? That it, your old man will cause you to sin. Because he is, lives a life of sin. For we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. In other words, the whole world is taken into spiritual captivity. The whole world. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, deceptive desires. Again, the world is in spiritual captivity, blinded and controlled and used to serve unseen forces of evil. We have been rescued to slay the enemies of God Amen. and destroy the kingdoms of darkness and move among satanic forces to expose, subdue, and drive out to establish the kingdom of truth of Christ Jesus. I imagine I better say that again. All right. Again, the world is in spiritual captivity. Of course, spiritual captivity represents they're blinded, they're controlled, and they're used to serve the unseen and seen forces of evil. When a person is in spiritual captivity, they become servants of darkness. Now, we have been called and we have been rescued to slay the enemies of God. Destroy kingdoms of darkness. And move among satanic forces. That means penetrate and infiltrate. To expose them, subdue them, and drive them out of territories to establish a kingdom of truth in Christ Jesus. If everybody could just grab hold of that alone, the world would be a better place. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter two. Spiritual captivity. Verse twenty. <clears throat> Second Timothy 2, verse 20. <clears throat> Let's speak it together. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the old man, in other words, he separates himself. You can't cleanse the old man, but you can cleanse yourself from its influences. How many of y'all know your new man is being influenced by the old man? And the old man is kept alive by the influence of darkness. Unless you are led by the spirit, he's crucified. Does everybody get it? But he ain't dead. He doesn't die 
until we give up our last breath. Then he goes back to the dust and we go home. Therefore, anyone cleanses himself from himself. <laughs> <laughs> he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master and prepared for every good work so we want to reach this level of separation from the old man so that there's no more influence even though when the influence comes it has no effect verse 22 Flee also useful lust. So he's telling us how to separate and further distance ourselves. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. What a, you know, one of the major things is associations. Yeah. You know, people don't realize what you associate with is going to influence you, you in every area. Whether it be through books, movies, m music, your workplace is one of the great places of influence. You certainly don't want to work with individuals that are not influencing you correctly. Even though sometimes you can't help it. That's why you must take dominion and authority. And let me tell you, God has always got a better place for you. <clears throat> and you don't want to hang around with people who call themselves believers that don't call out on the Lord out of a pure heart. Because they're truly not believers. Verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach. Listen, what is he saying? Look at Don't get caught up in all of these arguments of doctrine. Amen? Don't get caught up in that. Don't get sucked in the ring. Don't go there. We have a teaching for that. Amen. Don't go there. Depart from evil. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be what? Gentle. To all, but not to demons. Don't pet them. Kick them out. Able to teach. Every believer should be a teacher. Patience means endurance. Some people need endurance when worship. And humility, humble. Remember, you are hum when you are humble, you are hidden from the enemy. It's a cloak of humility that takes you off of the enemy's radar. But pride will put you on the enemy's radar and he will use you. And you can't correct someone if you're, in, if you're prideful. They're not going to receive it. Amen. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they turn from it. How many times do we need to be warned and still do the same thing? So that they may know the truth and be free. And that they may come to their what? Senses. And escape, everyone say escape. escape. The snare of the devil. Why? Because they've been taken spiritually captive. Having been taken captive to do the devil's will. Think about that. We must maintain a pure heart, clean hands, righteous motives. How about a righteous attitude? We should be able to witness and correct, but according to God's will, not ours. Why? To turn hearts of individuals that have been spiritually taken captive. The spiritual captivity is dangerous. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 1. The reason why spiritual captivity is dangerous is because most times people don't know it.
That's a great deception, isn't it? That's why if you're fellowshipping with people that are worshiping God out of our pure heart or staying filled with the Spirit of God, there won't be condemnation. There won't be condemning. There won't be um, accusing. There'll be conviction. There'll be counsel, correction, and direction. Actually, what will happen is you will get confirmation what the Holy Spirit's already convicted you on that you keep ignoring. <laughs> Verse 26. Let's speak it, please. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. What's the word called represent? We are called to what? Battle. So when you are called, you are called to battle. Not to be a pew sitter, a chair warmer, an observer, but to be activated. Be filled with the Spirit of God and activated in warfare. You were called. You were drafted. Your number came up. There's no reserve. Hello? You're not on inactive duty. You are in active duty. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, are that no flesh shall glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Again, but of him you are in Christ Jesus. So because you and I are in Christ Jesus, we are now have become the wisdom of God. We have now become the righteousness of God. We have now become the sanctification of God. We have now become the redemption of God and carriers of this. This is how you know your identity. When you lose these, you lose your identity. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Oh, yeah. See, many don't see their calling, their purposes, or destiny. Because they're still in spiritual captivity. Or they, or they were once free and have fallen back into spiritual captivity. And now prisoners of deceptive bondage. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter four. That's why freedom is learned and trust is earned. Remember the knowledge of God is light and food for me and you. It's life. So the more we eat, the more we observe, the more we uh, uh, absorb, the more light the more we worship, the more filled, the more the separation between the old man and the new man, and the more victories you have. The more victories you have, the more power you have. So you want to maintain a level of the power to constantly overcome anything that comes against you. In verse 16, spiritual captivity. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, let's speak it. Therefore, we do not what? Lose heart. Lose heart. Don't grow weary. Don't give up. Hello. 
No matter what's happened, no matter whether you've been chased by, chastened by the Lord, whether you've been rebuked, it doesn't matter. He chastens those he loves. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? You are not forsaken. He will never forsake you. He wants you to, and if you've fallen in a place of disobedience and rebellion, and he's correcting you, then he wants you to earn his trust again. Does everybody get it? He never gives up on us. We give up on him. And then we fall in a woe is me state and become weenies and wimps instead of warriors, losing our identity of who we are and what we've been through. And then people start looking for the things that are past to try and find fulfillment. That's when the enemy has got you and you've fallen into spiritual captivity. Looking for fulfillment of the past. Therefore, do not lose heart even though your outward man is perishing. Hallelujah. Yet the in inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction what is, but, is a, but a moment, even for some of us it may seem like an eternity, but thank God we don't go by how we feel. It's working for us. Me, 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 my stupid, you mean my stupid decision is working for me? Yes, if you let it. If you let it. If you're not blaming everybody else for it. If you're taking full responsibility for your decision that you made that was stupid or rebellious. You're willing to take full responsibility. Now it's working to the good. Because God is using it. Anybody ever make a mistake? Don't lift your hands. We could all lift our feet on that one. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know why people don't see this? Because they're spiritually been taken captive. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, because they're always looking at the things that are seen. But at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. They're eternal. Many still rely on only physical sight and don't go beyond into the spiritual sight of truth to discern two important things, motive and attitude. They're not willing to go to that place where it's revealing spiritual captivity of demonic influences. They are still captives of darkness, not able to see the full picture of truth. They have partial vision. And they only see or believe what they want to. Not knowing that they are influenced. We must live a life of freedom or liberty and desire others to be free from demonic activity or you're not in right standing with God. Think about that. Everyone should want everyone to be free. I want to see everyone free in the world. Even crooked Hillary. <laughs> I want to see her get free. I don't want to see anyone cook forever. Why? Because that's the heart of God. Amen. Amen? I want to see everyone get free from Obama nights and all those false doctrines and doctrines of demons. And God wants to see everyone get free. 2 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. Spiritual captivity. In verse 11, oh, Corinthians, you did it again. <laughs> How many times do I have to write to you? <laughs> we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us. Quit blaming us. 
but you are restricted by your own affections, emotions, and feelings, wrong motives, and wrong attitudes because you are spiritually in captivity. Now, in return for the same, I speak to you as children because you ain't going to get it. You also be open. Here it is. This is what's going to avoid spiritual captivity. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers, or you will be taken in captivity. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And don't approve of those things either. And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I'm going to dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God, and they'll be my people if they do something important. If they come out from among them in the entanglements and affairs of this world and be separate, says the Lord. I want you to understand that this is spiritual. Does everybody get it? This is spiritual. This is not physical. This is spiritual. He's talking about spiritually. Everybody's trying to look at this as coming out of Babylon and whatever. Well, Babylon is associated with a spiritual influence. He's talking about coming out of the spiritual captivity with a spiritual influence that causes captivity. Come out from among them that carry this. Come out from witches and sorcerers. Come out from mediums. Come out away from demonic forces. Familiar spirits and divination. Come out from among them. Come out from going after horoscopes. <laughs> Grab a telescope. <laughs> Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. Does everybody understand this? He's not talking about laws of the land. <laughs> He's talking about spiritual things that will cause you spiritual captivity. You and I have dominion over all the laws of the land, but it doesn't mean you don't disobey them. Does everybody understand that? I have dominion over anything. Paul said we won't be taking captivity into anything or bondage. Come out from among them, says the Lord. Don't touch or agree. What is what? Unclean. 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 Does everybody get it? Unclean. And I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters. Now this is powerful because in this, He's saying your affections or desires, these motives and attitudes <laughs> are influenced by deceptions. You're not seeing the things that are being, you're bringing you sin and captivity. You're agreeing with these things. See, when relationship is established with you and the Lord, so is identity. If it's not established, and one of the things the enemy wants to do is disconnect you from relationship. He wants to disconnect you from the presence of God, disconnect you from the word of God, disconnect you from your promises, influence, and who you are in Christ Jesus. He wants to disconnect you from those things. Why? If he can, then you drift from your identity. In some areas, when relationship is fully not established, this part has not been reached or when individuals are getting close to reaching this reality of sonship or daughtership and identity, it is stolen because they're still in spiritual captivity. Every time they try to get there, it's stolen again. It's stolen again. It's stolen again. Because they're still in spiritual captivity and don't even realize it. And then they wonder, they're going, gosh, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. But they're still in captivity. Why? Because they've still not cut loose of the things they've agreed with. They've still not cut loose of those emotional attachments. They've still not brought forth the true repentance. 
You know, everybody repents when they get caught. Hello? Well, what about prior to that? And the reason why that's not established is because there's truly not true relationship. And the person is still in captivity. Spiritual captivity. It's a ploy of the enemy. It's his desire. But it sure isn't God's. Amen? Amen. Is everybody okay? Romans 7. Spiritual captivity. Verse 21. You know, I see that many people try, 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 but they don't connect. You know, because sometimes people are trying in different ways and what God's trying to show them. <coughs> I've seen people, they worship when there's praise, and when there's praise, they worship. Or when it's worship, they praise. Like, man, it's so out of order. It's like ridiculous. They, and they wonder why they can't make contact. When it's praise time, you praise. Amen? Amen? You dance, you warfare, you shake the demons off and loose yourself from the monkeys. Anybody remember the mashed potato? Never mind. <laughs> I don't think that's... There was a song called The Mashed Potato. Anyways. You can do a little James Brown. Oh, that feels good. Just shake them off no matter what it takes. I feel good. Ooh. Anyways. James 7, or Romans 7, verse 21. <laughs> Yes, you can Google mashed potato. That's cool. <laughs> I'm doing a mashed potato. Anyways. God help me. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. <laughs> we better start at 20. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Spirit of mashed potato. <laughs> I find then a law that is evil present with me, the one who wills to do good. So there's times when, man, you know, you just realize, you know, man, why, why is this happening? There's a, there's a law. A law represents a belief system that is, whether, whether it's good or evil, but he's saying there's a belief system in me that is evil that is in the members and memory of my old man. It's a nature that has been taken under control spiritually by demonic forces. Does everybody understand that? Your old man is still under control by demonic forces. That's why you got to keep it crucified. I find then a law, verse 21, that evil is present with me, the one, and the, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the, in the law and the word. Amen of life and truth from God, I delight in that, according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, my mind, my thoughts, my imaginations, my soul, my feelings, my emotions, my decisions, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. This word mind means spirit. With my spirit, I serve the law of God. And with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. So this law, which means belief system that is either evil or good... Amen? The evil is associated with the old man and its nature still taken under spiritual captivity. Even though I delight in the word of life and truth of the creator, the inward battle continues between the old and the new. It doesn't stop. You sleep with the old dude, 
You work with him. You play sports. He's always trying to trip you up one way or another if you give him opportunity. That's why you must distance yourself from him. Amen. Amen. So we see here that this continuous battle of old and new is not only is involved also in outside influence of worldly views and temptations. But he says, I am able to overcome with the anointing of Christ Jesus, with weapons of his name, his word, and his blood. In the relationship that I have with him, I keep myself free from captivity of evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18. Oh, happy days. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Why? Because they have been spiritually taken captive. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who, were be who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, <clears throat> but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and weakness of God is stronger than man. For you see your calling, brethren, that not mighty wise according to the flesh, not many, uh, many mighty, not many noble are called. Does everybody see that? Again, the message of the cross is foolishness <clears throat> and to individuals who've been taken captive spiritually. Amen? They, they, by evil spirits, these, these are evil spirit beings. These evil spirit beings, they promote hatred. They promote vulgarity and perversion. They promote lying. They promote adultery. They promote rebellion. They promote murder. They promote abortion. They promote a gay agenda. You know, people don't realize that liberalism is the same doctrine as Satan. Do what you feel like. There's a lot of liberals out there. Do what you feel like. They have no idea that they've been taken captive spiritually and are servants of Satan. They don't know it. Do what you feel like Satan's doctrine. There are, there, there are promoters of false religions, self-religions. They're promoters of pride, love of money and power and lust. They proclaim liberty, but yet they are taken captives themselves, <clears throat> and they bring others into their own captivity with false promises and fame. In Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, and verse 21. So this spiritual captivity <clears throat> is actually associated with they've been taken captive in their minds, in their thoughts, in their soul. Their soul has been taken captive. It's not been completely converted. And there are believers who have been believers for 20 and 30 years who still haven't been completely converted in the soul. There's still spiritual captivity there.
Let's speak at verse 21. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your what? In your mind. Why? Because been taken spiritual captivity. By wicked works, yet now he has what? Reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you do something, if you what? Continue. Continue, continue, continue. Get up, go after. Get up, go after. Continue in the faith. Faith means representation is connected to God's presence. Grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, became a minister. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which had been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily, that we must continue, continue, continue. James chapter 1. <clears throat> James chapter 1. Spiritual captivity. No. Verse 19. James chapter 1 verse 19. Hallelujah. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Hmm. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls or convert your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is, was. In other words, he's lost his identity. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hero but a doer of, those, of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and can't bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion for God and the Father is this to visit orphans, widows, and their trouble, and keep oneself unspotted from the world so you do not fall into spiritual captivity. First John chapter 2, and then one more scripture. Oh, hallelujah. First John chapter 2, verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I think a lot of people forget that. Do you know that in you, you know everything? Just Google Holy Ghost. <laughs> In you, you know everything. Does everybody get it? 
Hey, if God is in you, do you know everything? Amen. Amen. He knows it all, doesn't he? Amen. So that's why it's important to stay connected. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things that pertain to what? Life. That pertain to demonic forces. That pertain to the righteousness of God. That pertain to his plan. That pertain to your identity. You know all things. So we don't have any excuse. We can try and find them. And I'm sure we can find piles of them. But it doesn't do any good. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who tried to deceive you and steal your identity and put you into spiritual captivity. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things that is true, and it's not a lie, just as it is taught you, you will abide in him, abiding in the anointing. Amen? Amen? We have the anointing. The demons know you're anointed. Amen. But they want to convince you that you're not. Amen. If they can convince you of anything, and you agree with it, you are immediately taken into captivity. Immediately. Second Peter chapter 1. That's why it's important to stay filled, dressed, and possessed, and connected so that you can discern when captivity begins to approach you. Or if you're in captivity, that you humble yourself when you're being corrected. Amen. If you're justifying yourself, you're in captivity deeper than you realize. Especially if you've fallen into the butt syndrome. But, 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 but. But this, but that, but do, but do, but dee, but And that ain't tongues. That's about excuses. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be what? multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord and his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life. That divine power is called the anointing and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Listen, the divine nature is backed by the anointing. No anointing, no divine nature. I'm going to tell you that right now. You can fake it, but you can't make it. <laughs> Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Why? Because he's been taken to what? Into spiritual captivity. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? You will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Spiritual captivity can be broke. Amen? It can be broke. If you are willing to allow it to be broke. The anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. The enemy likes to put us in captivity physically. So he can torment you spiritually. Amen? But if you're strong in the power of the Lord, you won't be. If your inner man is stronger than the outer, older man, your newer man, you won't be tormented. You'll have victory no matter what your body says. No matter what the world says. No matter what your old man says. You'll have victory. And more victory, more power. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that has been empowered in us be so planted and rooted that it grows and bears fruit for your glory, not allowing the devil to steal it, that we may overcome in every area and break us loose from all spiritual captivity of the demonic forces that we may walk in spirit, power, and truth as your sign and wonders in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen.